Hi, welcome back. Last time we started talking about how cellular activities, or your activities in general, require energy. There are many, many processes in your body, in your cells, that are endergonic, that require energy in order to proceed. So we asked the question, where does that energy come from? Now let me say right away, if you haven't watched the previous video, you should go back and watch it. I'll put a little link thing right here. There it is. Do you see it? Click on that. If you haven't watched that already, go there, then come back. So in that video, we established that these chemical reactions that require energy, most of them in the cell get that energy from the breakdown of ATP, adenosine triphosphate, into ADP and phosphate. We talked about ATP as a sort of charged up battery and ADP with phosphate uh, as a depleted or discharged battery. And then we said there must be a way to recharge the battery so that we can continue powering all these various cellular activities, so that we can continue to uh, make new molecules, uh, maintain and, and repair our tissues, uh, contract our muscles, think our thoughts, and so forth. And so we said there must be a, a process by which ADP and phosphate is recharged to ATP. And we found the answer to that question in the inner mitochondrial membrane in the form of an enzyme called ATP synthase. And we talked about ATP synthase as a sort of water wheel um, that has a spinning component near the top. Uh, this uh, component spins, causing the shaft below to spin, which transfers power to this catalytic knob at the bottom. And this catalytic knob uh, combines ADP and phosphate to form ATP. And we said, well, ATP synthase, if it's recharging and providing energy to ADP and phosphate to make ATP, must itself have a, a source of energy, and, and indeed it does. The source of energy for ATP synthase is a proton gradient. That is to say, the concentration of protons up here is much higher than the concentration of protons down here. There's a concentration gradient. This space up here, by the way, to remind you, is the intermembrane space or intermembrane compartment between the inner and outer mitochondrial membranes. And this space down here, that's the mitochondrial matrix. That's the inner, inner sanctum of the mitochondria. So now, uh, we know how ATP is recharged. It's recharged by ATP synthase, which is powered by the movement of protons down their concentration gradient through this ATP synthase enzyme, uh, causing it to spin and, and catalyze this reaction. But now the question must arise, how does the proton gradient form? Uh, we know from our study of transport that establishing a higher concentration on one side of the membrane requires energy. So energy must have been spent to establish this proton gradient. So our question now is, what's providing that energy? Where did the energy come from to make the proton gradient? And this is a really important question because this ultimately would be the answer to the question of what powers your cellular activities. ATP breaking down powers your cellular activities, but ATP is itself powered by this proton gradient. So the next step is to answer the question, what provides the energy to make the proton gradient, and how is it made? Let's take a look. So here we are again at a animation, which by this time should be fairly familiar to you. You'll remember that this big enzyme down here in the lower right is ATP synthase. You can see it producing ATP from ADP and phosphate right here. You can see uh, the membrane. This is the inner mitochondrial membrane, all those phospholipids. And you can see a higher concentration of protons, or H plus ions, on the top side of this membrane, the intermembrane space, a much higher concentration up here than down here in the mitochondrial matrix. And you can also see here the protons flowing through ATP synthase, spinning this rotor region, uh, and that uh, spinning is what powers the formation of ATP down here below. So now the question is, how do we get all these protons up here? That takes energy. So how does it happen and what powers it? And so if you look at this animation, you probably observed this last time, these protons are being pumped from the mitochondrial matrix down below to the intermembrane space above, and they're being pumped by these brown blob things. Well, these brown blob things are proteins, and they are proton pumps which form a series of uh, protein components of a whole system that we call the electron transport chain. 
We'll get to that in a moment. For now, what I want you to notice is that they are pumping protons across the inner mitochondrial membrane into the uh, intermembrane space. So we have proton pumping from this far rightmost complex, we have proton pumping from this far leftmost complex, and I think we'll see in a moment here some proton pumping through this middle complex if we're, if we're patient. I think it's about to happen. There we go, there's the proton pumping. Now in this animation, the protons uh, sort of magically appear and disappear, but don't worry about that. Just consider these three complexes as proton pumps. So there you go, there you go. The proton gradient is established by proton pumps in the inner mitochondrial membrane. So we've answered one half of the question, which is how do you make this proton gradient? You have proton pumps in the inner mitochondrial membrane that pump protons from the matrix to the intermembrane space. Voila. But we're not quite done because pumping those protons against a concentration gradient from a region where the concentration is low to a region where the concentration is high requires energy. Now the question is, where does that energy come from? So in order to answer this question, I think it's helpful to move from this animation, which is dynamic and constantly moving, to a static representation. It's just a little simpler. So we'll go to the static representation, then we'll come back to this one and uh, see if we can make more sense of it. All right. So here we have a simple sort of cartoon version of the electron transport chain. And uh, let's just orient ourselves first. So here is the cytoplasm. So that's the exterior uh, outside of the mitochondrion. Here's the outer mitochondrial membrane, which is not depicted in the previous animation. Here's the inner mitochondrial membrane with our electron transport chain proteins and our ATP synthase right here. That must mean that this down here is the mitochondrial matrix and this right here is the intermembrane space. So again, here's our ATP synthase, making ATP from ADP and phosphate. Here's the high concentration of protons up in the intermembrane space, relatively low concentration of protons down here in the mitochondrial matrix. So the question is, uh, what powers the movement of protons? And what I'd like you to focus on right now is this molecule of oxygen right here. So this molecule of oxygen is going to be gaining electrons and protons as well to form water. So oxygen gas plus a couple of protons plus a couple of electrons forms water. And that is an exergonic process. It's a process that releases energy. So that's part of the source of energy for this proton pumping that we're seeing across the electron transport chain, but it's not the whole story. In fact, Oxygen is just the last molecule to accept electrons in an exergonic process. In other words, oxygen is the final electron acceptor of the electron transport chain. I want to say that again because it's really important and you should memorize that. Oxygen is the final electron acceptor of the electron transport chain. Okay, so if it's the final electron acceptor, there must be intermediate electron acceptors and probably an electron donor somewhere in there. Well, we'll get there. So what happens here is oxygen uh, accepts electrons or pulls electrons away from this protein complex here. This protein complex pulls electrons from the previous one. This one pulls electrons from an earlier step in the electron transport chain, a, a, a different molecule. This pulls electrons from a different molecule, from a different molecule, and so on. So what you have here is essentially a series of molecules with increasingly strong attraction to electrons. Oxygen has the strongest attraction to electrons. It can pull electrons from any of these components, but it only really binds right here because of the active site on this enzyme. So oxygen comes up here, pulls an electron off of this complex. That then allows this complex to pull electrons from the neighboring complex. That then allows this complex to pull electrons from the next molecule over, and so on and so forth. It's sort of like um, a bucket brigade. Have you ever seen this? Uh, where if there's no um, fire hose available, you can just fill up buckets at the river, pass them one person to the next, all along the line, and then you know finally throw it on the fire. Uh, except instead of water, we're passing electrons. And instead of pouring them on a fire, we're uh, combining them with oxygen to form water. So think of the electron transport chain, if you like, as a sort of bucket brigade for electrons. 
Now those transfers of electrons from molecule to molecule, those transfers are all exergonic. So all of these transfers release energy. What happens to that energy? That energy is used to pump protons across the inner mitochondrial membrane from the matrix to the intermembrane space and establish the proton gradient, which powers ATP synthase, which recharges ATP, which powers all your cellular activities. So we've got an electron transport chain. It's a chain of electron transport. That electron transport releases energy. That energy is used to pump protons. But where do the electrons come from? The electrons come from two molecules. One of them is called NADH, and the other is called FADH2. NADH and FADH2 are our electron carriers. Another piece of important vocabulary. NADH and FADH2 are our electron carriers. We might also sensibly call these electron donors because they are the molecules that give up their electrons to the electron transport chain. So to make a bit of a contrast here, oxygen has a very strong attraction to electrons. NADH and FADH2 have very weak attractions to electrons. So NADH and FADH2 have a tendency to give up their electrons very easily. Oxygen has a strong tendency to attract and grab onto those electrons. So what we can see is uh, essentially, the, the net result is that NADH and FADH2 are really giving their electrons to oxygen through a series of intermediaries. I'll say that again, NADH and FADH2 are really giving their electrons to oxygen through a series of intermediaries. Those are the proteins, the molecules of the electron transport chain. And you can think about it that way. You can think of the ultimate reaction, the net reaction going on here as the loss of electrons by NADH and FADH2. You can also call that the oxidation, if you want to be chemical about it. The oxidation of NADH and FADH2 and the reduction of oxygen to form water. So the electron transport chain pumps protons into the intermembrane space. Where does that energy come from? It comes from the reaction between NADH and FADH2, which is mediated by the electron transport chain and results in the reduction of water. Let's go back to our overview and uh, see if we can put all the pieces together. All right, here we are again at our overview of cellular energy production. We're going to have to scroll it over a little bit. And here we are, there's the proton gradient. And now the final piece slots into place, NADH and FADH2 with oxygen all react. <laughs> They're intermediate steps, of course, in the form of the electron transport chain, but the products are NAD+. This is the NADH without its electrons and hydrogen. Uh, FAD, that's FADH2 without some electrons and hydrogen, and then the oxygen uh, reacts with those electrons and those hydrogens to form water. Now this isn't a balanced reaction, but uh, I just wanted to show you sort of the overall net reaction here. So NADH, FADH2, and oxygen form NAD+, FAD, and H2O. All right, so here's our ATP synthase on the far right being powered by the proton gradient. Here's oxygen, the final electron acceptor. It's pulling electrons off of this component of the electron transport chain and protons are being pumped across the membrane. Where are those electrons coming from? They're coming from a series of other molecules which transfer electrons from one to the other to the other to the other uh, until they finally reach oxygen. The ultimate origin of those electrons, here comes NADH dropping off protons and electrons uh, at this first stage. There went FADH2, did you miss it? Just drops off some electrons right here. Let's see if we can catch them in the act again. Here comes NADH. It's going to bind to, transfer its electrons to this first complex here. We get some proton pumping. There went FADH2 again, transferring its electrons uh, to the electron transport chain as well. So basically, again, what we're seeing is NADH and FADH2 transferring electrons through the electron transport chain to the final electron acceptor, which is oxygen. In the process of this transfer, protons are pumped across the inner mitochondrial membrane to the intermembrane space, and the proton 
gradient is established, which then powers ATP synthase, which recharges ADP and phosphate to ATP. That ATP then goes on to power cellular activities. So we're done. We've figured it out. We now know the source of all energy in the cells. It's these uh, molecules NADH and FADH2 reacting with oxygen. But wait, if NADH and FADH2 are reactants, which form products that have less energy and, and that release energy in the process of their reaction, where did their energy come from? Or how do you recharge this NAD plus to NADH? How do you recharge FADH2 to FAD? That energy has to come from somewhere. So once again, we've just kicked the can down the road again. Now we're not asking where does the proton gradient get its energy from, we're asking where do NADH and FADH2 get their energy from. We'll have to find that out next time. Next time, the citric acid cycle. See you then.